The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. You must stay at home. Close all shops. We'll stop all gatherings, weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies. Stay at home. Protect our NHS and save lives. to another Worship From Home. This worship service is part of our Weekend of Light and I hope you've been able to take part in some of the activities that have happened so far this weekend. It's still disappointing that we can't meet together properly and I hope no one is disappointed if I don't use Matthew 18 20 to introduce this service. Instead I want to read from Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 19 and ending at verse 22. This passage is titled, A Temple for the Lord. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. A church building is sometimes called God's house. In reality, God's household is not a building but a group of people. He lives in us and shows himself to a watching world through us. People can see that God is love and that Christ is Lord as we live in harmony and each other and in accordance with what God says in his word. We are citizens of God's kingdom and members of his household. Now I can't take any credit for that. That's in my that's in my Bible. That's the notes in my Bible. But as members of God's household, let us always allow his light to shine in our homes. And let us remember to be a light for him in our everyday lives. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that was ever, that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning, concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor a human decision, or a, a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his, his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in grace, grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Hello everybody, it's really nice to be back with you all for another worship from home. We hope you've enjoyed the worship so far um, and we're excited to sing with you tonight. Um, we've just read those amazing verses um, in chapter one of John there and one that's really, really stood out is verse 17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So our songs tonight, um, we feel really reflect um, Jesus' grace and truth. So the first song we're going to sing is This Is Amazing Grace by Phil Lickham. And the second song we're going to sing um, is called Boldly I Approach by Rand Collective. So let's sing together.
when thinking about the themes of light and darkness in John's Gospel, Isaiah 9 came to mind. Isaiah 9 verses 1 to 3. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the inextinguishable light in a dark world. What a privilege it is to come before you now in the shadow of our own imperfections. You know each and every one of us, our sin, our struggles, our weaknesses, and yet you welcome us into your light. You are mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, our wonderful counsellor, and how we need you. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come together apart, to spend time worshipping you. We ask that your marvellous light would shine on us, that we may encounter you this evening through this time of praise and devotion. Open our hearts and minds to receive all that you have for us individually and together. Remove all barriers we have to hearing from you now, which stop us from wholly surrendering to your truth and call for us. We acknowledge that amidst the chaos and disorder of this world, you alone are in control and have ensured that the present darkness will not go on forever. You are sovereign over all nations, over all our trials and tribulations. You, Lord, are our hope and salvation. Lord, forgive us for all the ways in which we let you down every day. When we have filled our own lives with busyness and not sought your presence, we're sorry for failing to testify to the truth of your light to those we encounter in our daily lives. Forgive us, Lord, as we spend an increasing amount of time inside our own homes for neglecting those outside our four walls. You know the depths of our hearts, how we have each let sin gain a foothold, where selfish attitudes poison relationships and our pride blinds us to our own faults. Help us to live in the light through which you, Jesus, cleanse us from all these sins. Lord, by your Spirit, transform us into faithful servants, eager and able by your Holy Spirit's work within us to reveal your love to our friends and family, co-workers and neighbours. Lord, we want to remember those who are suffering, especially during this pandemic whether it be physically, mentally or financially. As we adjust to new restrictions, please be with those whose livelihoods are in jeopardy through business closures and redundancy. Lord, bring healing and comfort to the sick. Reveal your love and peace to those feeling isolated and lonely at this time. We are so grateful for all those who have been working throughout to support our community our frontline NHS staff and shop workers too. Thank you for the technology that helps us to stay connected with loved ones in a safe way. We are humbled by the shops and cafes who have donated to help children dependent on preschool meals during school closures. Father, as the COVID-19 pandemic occupies the thoughts of the whole world, we pray that you would help us not to forget other dark situations that are in desperate need of your light. The civil war between government forces and Houthi rebels has torn the nation of Yemen apart, resulting in a severe humanitarian crisis there, which endangers the lives of 12 million children through starvation and homelessness. Thank you for the tremendous work of aid agencies and charities. Give them the strength and the resources they need to continue to support the people. Please continue to empower those seeking peace in this region. We boldly ask for your powerful intervention and for your love to flood the land. As we look ahead to the upcoming presidential election in the US, we ask you to make the values of your kingdom known. Through what has sometimes been a bitter and chaotic campaign trail, Groups of people have been left feeling marginalised and daunted by the responsibility of electing a new leader during a global pandemic. Where people are left not knowing where to turn, 
Father, give wisdom and understanding. Thank you for the leader we have in Jesus. Thank you for his example of humbling himself and preaching a message of universal acceptance for all those who place their trust in him, rich and poor, strong and weak, young and old. We ask that whatever the outcome, we would respond by praying to empower the new president with justice and compassion. Lord God, we thank you for the wonderful group of people who hold positions of responsibility in our church at St. Phil Road. For Ben, Johnny, Jill, the session and the committee, who continue to give time and consideration to leading our congregation in these abnormal times. As we look forward to a time when we can begin meeting more frequently in person, please help us to provide a responsible demonstration of our faith to a wider community. Please keep us safe and mindful of those who are not yet ready for this next step. You have promised, Lord, that the darkness will not go on forever. And we are so excited at the prospect of enjoying fellowship with one another with one another again. Please continue to challenge and equip us to be light in your world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Hello everyone and welcome to the McKee House. We're really, really glad that you can join us for some worship from our home to yours. Um, we're going to lead you in two songs. Uh, the first is a classic and an old favourite, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. Really just reminding us of, of God, how he, you know, he talks about uh, being a shepherd and, and leading his flock in the way that it should go. His goodness leads us home to him. And the second one we're going to lead is probably a new one to a lot of you. It's um, called Alive in You by a band called Jesus Culture. Um, we both really love this song. It's on repeat in our house uh, most days. So um, it's, it's one that's really been speaking to us through this time and reminds us, you know, um, even in the fire, like we're alive, we're alive in God. You know, it's, he, he speaks that into our lives and, and, and gives us the light that we need. So we'll sing together now.
out, you're the great I am. Breath of life, I breathe you in. Even in the fire, I'm alive in you. You are strong in my brokenness, sovereign over every step. Even in the fire, I'm alive, I'm alive in you. Through the dark I hear your voice. Rising up I will rejoice. Beginning to the end, you deserve the glory, you deserve the glory. It's no longer I who live, Christ who lives within me, Christ who lives within me. It's great to welcome you again to our house in Money Ray. We would love to be worshipping together in person, but we're so thankful for all of this technology and for the wonderful techie guys at church who are able to put all of this together. This song is called What a Beautiful Name and it speaks to, um, speak to us about God and Jesus and how beautiful and powerful and wonderful the name of God is and um, it just reminds us that if we're struggling or if we if we need help he is there because he's all powerful and he's wonderful he is the one true king so let's sing it together the 
plugging in. One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory and creation now revealed with you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. My what a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus, you brought heaven down. The sin was great, your love was great. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name. Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you, you silenced the bolt of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What is light? The scientists among us might describe light as electromagnetic radiation that can be detected by the human eye. The engineers might call it a, a byproduct of electricity passing through a filament, heating it up to the point where it shines. Or we might describe it as where we see it coming from, from the sun, from a light bulb, or from phone screens. Light from the sun causes plants to grow, brings joy into our moods, and causes some lucky people to tan. I just seem to freckle or burn. Light from light bulbs helps us to see when it's dark, inside or outside. Or light from screens projects information and entertainment towards us. But it's funny because light is still just light. Without even thinking too deeply, we know what it is and the difference it makes to our lives. It is essential to us. Walking along the street we can see the blue of the sky as light from the sun is reflected off the atmosphere and we see more of the blue spectrum of light. And when we think about light, we always pair it with darkness. As we come into this time of year, the nights are longer. And it's easy for some people to go a lot of days and not even see daylight. And especially around Halloween, it seems that the world celebrates the darkness over the light. Like two sides of a coin, Darkness is unmistakably the absence of light. 
And in contrast to the life-giving nature of light, there is something just unsettling about darkness. As children, we may have found it absolutely natural to be afraid of the dark. Fear of the dark stems from a primal survival instinct that something might be out there looking to harm us. And we need to be prepared to fight or to run. And when morning comes, we have that sense of relief and that nervous anticipation fades away because the day is here, the night is gone, and we are safe again, able to see far and wide because of light. God's word has a lot to say about light. At the very start of the Bible, we are told this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. God spoke light into the darkness, banishing it to its place of night and dispelling the chaos that existed in that darkness and the formless void, and he replaced it with the order of light. God saw the light that he created and saw that it was good. He made that separation between day and night so distinct and making sure to call that light good. Lucy wonderfully read John chapter 1, for us earlier, and it tells us more about light and about creation. In John 1 verses 1 to 5 it says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John is referring to Jesus here. He talks about Jesus being the Word, spoken at the dawn of creation. He talks about Jesus being with God in the beginning, part of the Holy Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he says that in Jesus was life, and that life was the light of men. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. There are three things that I'd like to to focus on about light. The first is that light draws us in and it shows us the way. One of the great things about light is that it shows us a pathway where in darkness we would see none. Think of, of a lighthouse. There are two main purposes of a lighthouse. The first is to act as a navigational aid to ship to show ships where to go. And the other is to show them where not to go and to warn them of dangerous areas. Or or think of an airport runway with lights that guide planes in, showing them the path they need to follow to land safely, otherwise they would be in trouble. Jesus came to proclaim God's kingdom come. He came to guide people towards God and to show them the way in which they should go. Jesus says this in John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then he says this in John 10 verse 10, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Now for anyone who served on a Newton breed assism team in recent years, you would have worn those words on your back and in your heart every day. Jesus came to give life, just like it says in John 1 and John 10. He contrasted it to a thief coming to kill and steal and destroy. Thieves typically act under the cover of darkness because they want to be hidden, because what they're doing is wrong. But Jesus came to be the light that cut through that darkness and to point people on a path towards God. He challenged the status quo And it was his mission to guide people out of darkness. We read in Matthew 4 about the start of Jesus' ministry of preaching, where Matthew quotes from Isaiah 9. And he says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. 
on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. These words are, are familiar to many as they would be read at Christmas services, pointing the people of God towards the coming of King Jesus. Jesus came to be the light in the darkness. And John's gospel was written to point people towards Jesus. John says in verse 7 that he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. In these darker days and nights, we find it more difficult to see the light. It's easier to feel a little less joyful and a little less focused as we get caught up on what's happening around us. Um, and we're tempted instead to focus on the darkness. Without God, we are lost in a wilderness without light and without hope. Light is attractive. It is enticing. We feel safer in the light than in the darkness. And when we consider that Jesus came to guide us out of spiritual darkness and death and into eternal life and light, we see the beauty of his rescue mission for his light to give us life life to the full. The second thing is that light illuminates what is hidden. When light shines into the darkness, it does two things. It opens our eyes to what is before us, but only by showing us what lives in the darkness where we already are. I, I liken it to Indiana Jones in the film Raiders of the Lost Ark. Dr. Henry Jones Jr., played by Harrison Ford, has finally found the resting place of the Ark of the Covenant what he has spent the whole film searching for. And as he drops a flaming torch into the temple below him, he sees his greatest fear. Snakes, he says. Why did it have to be snakes? To, see, to get what, to what we seek the most, we have to confront what lives in the darkness. For Christians who are seeking a relationship with a holy God, that is the sin within. Part of the journey to becoming a Christian requires confronting darkness because it requires proud human hearts to admit fault and weakness. To admit that we are not God. We see the result of sin in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve sinned against God by eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They go against God's word and his command and are exiled from the Garden of Eden in case they also eat from the tree of life. Sin cuts them off from the relationship with God that they enjoyed in the garden and makes life tough for them. Sin leads to death. And throughout the Bible we see that sin is, is hardwired into every human heart. It is an unavoidable truth for which sacrifices were constantly being made to purify God's people. When we truly accept our salvation through Christ, we acknowledge that we are imperfect people who mess up and sin again and again. The light shows us our own darkness. And as we become more in step with the light, we begin to understand that darkness a lot more. We understand sin and how offensive that sin is to a holy God. The world around us is quick to call out imperfections and to judge and label them by its own standards. We can see this in the so-called cancel culture that exists where mistakes by people in the public eye results in their alienation and boycotting. And that is contradictory to what we tell our children. It's a double standard that is applied where we tell ourselves and each other that it's okay to make mistakes as they are opportunities for learning and growth. But the world around us says that we must be perfect otherwise we will be judged and found worthless. There, there is no forgiveness. The darkness around us seeks to overwhelm us and surround us. But it is God who truly surrounds us with his light. We are comforted by the fact that God sees all of our hearts and knows that darkness, but never thought twice about pursuing us with all of his heart. We are, we are terrified of being judged by the world. But the only judge whose, whose opinion really matters is God. Now the hard truth is that he has judged us all and found us all guilty of being sinners. But rather than punish us for those sins, as the world would, he sent Jesus to be the sacrifice and to take that punishment on our behalf. 
God looks at us now and doesn't see that darkness. He sees Jesus. It is sometimes referred to as the scandal of grace. Which brings us on to our final point. Light conquers the darkness. John says this. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We love stories of good overcoming evil. From the cartoons of my youth like like Thundercats who fought against the evil sorcerer Mumra the ever-living to epic films like Superman or Lord of the Rings we delight in celebrating heroes and their victories over the forces of evil. And when we bring that back into the realm of, of reality and of truth there is no greater display of this than Jesus and his flawless victory over darkness. We talked, um, John talked about the true light that gives light to everyone. Jesus didn't come to save a favoured few. He came to save everyone. The Apostle Paul understood this and in 1 Timothy he said, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. And he said this not to paint himself as a, as a horrible human being, but to recognise his awareness of what sin does to our relationship with God. Paul never confined it to Jesus just saving him, but saving all of us. Sin separated us all from God, but Christ bridged that gap um, that has existed since Genesis 3 and restored that direct relationship through his sacrifice for everyone. Jesus' victory came at the cost of his life, but it was a victory that could never be undone, and it was a cost he paid willingly. Jesus' victory marks itself by light. In Revelation chapter 21, we hear about this vision of the new heaven and the new earth, and it says this, I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendour into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We look forward to a day when we will never be separated from God again. We will live with him in his holy city and worship him forever, never again burdened by darkness and sin. The days are shorter and the nights are longer now. We are tempted to stray or to be overwhelmed. And the truth is that sometimes we are overwhelmed. But in this season of darkness, remember that the true light that came into the world for you. When we see Jesus, light of the world, we are drawn into God and his kingdom. He shows us any darkness that is hidden in our hearts, but he conquers that darkness and his victory is complete. Put your trust in the light today. There will be a day of no darkness and no night and we will live in the light of the glory of God forever. Amen. This song we're going to sing now is called Mighty to Save. Um, and the reason that we picked it was because in the bridge, um, the line says, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. And even in um, this time now, it's a very strange time during COVID, um, our prayer is that we as Christians can shine a light in our, in our homes, in our streets, in our places of work. And um, we hope that this song reminds you of that. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. 
As we come to the end of this Worship From Home service, I just want to thank everybody who was involved, um, who recorded music, who read, who prayed, um, who edited, who did sound, um, everybody behind the scenes as well. Um, so as we finish up tonight, um, we've put together a video with all of us who were, were involved in, in leading you in worship tonight, singing uh, In Christ Alone, probably one of the most well-known modern hymns. So please join with us and sing together in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, found through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on fullness of God in helpless babe, 
His gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. Oh, mm-hmm. 